Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the Modern Warfare fan film. To give credit where credit's due, that guy over there is Nico, he's one of the directors. And that guy over there is Sam, the other director. And I'm over here, doing sound for it. And that's the topic for this week's tutorial. This is the most fun part of sound recording. Whenever somebody dies, they have to make some kind of vocal effort. So here we are recording those. The one pro tip I have after recording myself dying about a thousand times now is the sound you want to make is not like a uh or just like a regular scream, but you want to like purse your lips and get like kind of a type of sound there. So when you get hit, it's like a Listen to that. That's how great that sounds. We got another guy getting shot. Who wants to do it? I'll do it. All right, here goes Matt. All garbage. What was the last one? This is like a light cough. Are you serious? What? This is not good. This is why I usually do them. Oh, okay. And go. All those were good. Uh, I didn't record it. <laughs> <laughs> So the two things that we hear all the time are, where do we get our gun sounds and weapon sounds? And I have a sound effects library, but all the sounds suck and I can't make anything good out of it. Well, to answer the first one, um, we get our sounds from libraries and also a lot from things that we've recorded ourselves from our own personal libraries. Uh, it's been built up just because we've been doing a lot of projects and every time we do a project, we record some more sounds for it. Um, if you're looking for quick and dirty gun sounds, one place that I suggest you start looking uh, is things like um, game sound effects packs. You know, guys have like made gun sound effects replacements for games like Counter-Strike or TF2. So look there if you're looking for some quick and dirty gun sounds that are pretty good sounding. Now, for the second point, you're right. Library sounds do suck on their own. In fact, all sounds suck on their own. The best sounding stuff is built. So you have to take a bunch of different elements. So let's take a look at one of the gunshots here. The first sound is a body punch. The second sound is the pistol slide going back. The third sound here is another punch. It has a little more crunch to it. The fourth sound is water splashes to kind of simulate what the blood sounds like. And the last sound is, weirdly enough, laser zaps, which is one of my favorite things to layer in with gunshots. You'll notice there's not a single gunshot sound in this gunshot sound. You have to be creative and build your sounds piece by piece until they sound right to you. And with everything else, this is what the gunshot sounds like. So sound is like the number one most overlooked thing when it comes to doing videos. I mean, you can have the coolest effects and the best looking stuff shot on the best cameras, and that only takes you like 95% of the way there for something that's like, you know, that comes off as professional. That extra 5% is the sound. In fact, the better your visuals, the more bad sound actually stands out. So if you have really good looking stuff and your sound isn't up to par, it makes the whole thing seem like garbage. I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the setup we use for sound. Um, for the more complicated stuff, like uh, Light Warfare, um, Corona Trigger, and also the Modern Warfare stuff, I'll go to Pro Tools. To use Pro Tools, you need some hardware with it. Uh, M-Audio makes an M-Audio compatible Pro Tools set that's pretty cheap. I'm using an M-Box 2. I just got it off Craigslist. You can get this stuff used. Pro Tools is the high end of stuff. For a lot of our easier movies, I'll just use Final Cut. And if you're using Vegas or Premiere, you can just use your editing program and put the sound effects in there. And that's the one important thing to remember with all these programs. It doesn't matter how much they are, it's, they pretty much do about the same things. A little bit easier in Pro Tools than it is in like a video editing program, but you can still get the same results. For voiceover stuff and for recording Foley and things like that, uh, I have here a Shure KSM 27 and a, just a little wind stopper. Any sort of condenser microphone is good for voiceover work. And you can get like uh, some of the Audio Technica ones, I think are like a hundred bucks or something. You don't need to spend a lot. And if you don't have a microphone, don't feel like you need to go run out and go grab a microphone. You can just use the microphone that's built into your camera and just record it. So in the same way, like having a good monitor is important to see like what your footage looks like. It's important to have decent speakers to hear what your sound is sounding like. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. See, I'm, I'm using the KRK Rocket 5s. I think they're about $150 a speaker. You can probably get them used for even less. Um, these are near field studio monitors, uh, and they make a whole bunch of them. I know uh, Audio, uh, I know M Audio makes a bunch of them. KRK makes some pretty good ones on the low end. Um, otherwise, you could just use headphones. These are uh, these are just Grotto, I think SR40 headphones. But it doesn't matter. The, what I really want to emphasize is it doesn't matter what equipment you have because 
I probably spent you know like 300 bucks total on the two speakers and like these headphones like $100 headphones but I used to be mixing stuff on $20 headphones and I used to not have like dedicated studio monitors, I used to have just computer speakers. What's important is when you're done, you should take your mix and you should put it on a CD and take it to a bunch of different places. Like you take it to your car, uh, put it in your stereo system, run it out of your laptop speakers or your computer speakers and just try and listen to it in all these different environments and try and see what it sounds like. Because what you're really going for is you're trying to make sure that sounds pretty good in all of those different environments. So for example, you might take it to your car speakers and you're like, oh, this is really bassy. I guess bass doesn't come out well on my, on my headphones. So now I know, okay, this is something I have to be careful of. And over time, the more you do it, the better you get with your equipment. I mean, I've had my headphones for like eight years now and I've had these speakers for like four years now and I'm not gonna change them because I really know what they sound like. Odds are you already have the equipment you need to make good sounding mixes. You just need to put in some time and learn how they sound.